Welcome to Biology 115. Today we're going to give you some background on chemistry that you need to know to be successful in biology. So we're going to start by talking about atoms and elements. So number one, atoms. Atoms are made of subatomic particles. So sub means beneath. Atomic it refers to atoms. So these three parts make up atoms. First off, protons. You may have heard of these before. Then neutrons and then electrons. And each of these have different properties. So the protons and the neutrons make up the majority of the mass of an atom. So this is um, the majority of what it weighs is because of protons and neutrons. So protons can be abbreviated P plus because they have a positive charge. Protons, positive charge. So P with a plus. The plus refers to the charge. These can also be abbreviated H plus. So we'll talk about that in a little minute here, so just hold on. Neutrons have a neutral charge, so that's abbreviated N for neutron, zero for no charge. Like positive charge here, P with a plus, neutral, no charge, zero. Electrons have a negative charge, so that's E for electrons, negative. <coughs> negative charge right there. So those are the abbreviations. Like I said before, protons and neutrons make up most of the mass of the element, and these are found in the atomic nucleus. The atomic nucleus is the absolute center of the atom. The electrons are found in the atomic orbitals, so these orbit the nucleus. These are on the outside. So electrons are going to be involved in bonding, as you're going to see in the next video. Okay. So if we were to draw a nucleus maybe has a couple neutrons, couple protons. Around that we'd have a couple electrons orbiting. And this is not really drawn to scale. Protons and neutrons are gigantic compared to electrons. I'm just not that great of an artist. So electrons are itty bitty and they circle around the outside. So here where the protons and the neutrons are, they're all clustered together. That is the nucleus. Around the outside, with these lines, are the electrons. So the electrons are on the outside, orbiting in the orbitals, orbiting the nucleus. <clears throat> okay. So the number of protons actually tells us something characteristic about these atoms. It tells us um, the atomic number. And we can find that in the periodic table of the elements. So elements are all one type of atom. So this is just one type of atom all together. Um, we can get a lot of information about that from the periodic table of the elements. <clears throat> okay, so if you look on your periodic table, upper left hand corner, we're going to talk about the simplest element, H, hydrogen. So in the center, see the letter H. Beneath that, you'll see the name, hydrogen. And at the top, there's a number and at the bottom there's a number. So H is the symbol. That's what we use for chemical formulas and anytime we say H we, everyone knows that we mean hydrogen because we've already assigned this name, the long name, to this particular symbol and there's no two symbols that are the same. Okay, the top number here is the atomic number and as I mentioned just a second ago this is the number of protons. This right here is the number of protons. The number at the bottom is the atomic mass. So mass is something like weight. And so for science, how we measure weight is in grams, which is actually a measure of mass. And then, you know, the mass per what? Because an element is made up of a whole type of, is one type of atom, but we didn't say a number of atoms. And so this is what this mole is. So this is the weight, or the, the mass, for a certain number of atoms. And that's how you can think of, like a dozen is 12. A mole is a measure of the number of atoms. And it's actually 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, if you remember that from chemistry class. I'm not going to mention that again. You don't need to know that for the exams. This mole is a measure of, it, it's a number of atoms, just like a dozen is 12 for eggs. 
Okay, so as I mentioned before, atomic numbers, number of protons, the atomic mass, we've just defined one proton is one gram per mole, one neutron is one gram per mole. So here you see one proton, this weighs about one gram per mole, and this little bit extra is the weight of the electron. So we can actually draw a hydrogen atom using information from the periodic table. So we've got one proton, and if we've got one proton, we have to have an equal number of electrons. Boom. Proton in the nucleus, no neutrons, because it doesn't weigh enough. And then one electron orbiting that. So this is actually a hydrogen atom. Simplest atom we can draw. In some instances, this electron, because it's on the outside, can maybe rub off if you're scooting your feet or something. And we can lose that electron, so it goes away. And what we would be left with is just the nucleus, which for the hydrogen atom is a proton. And so that's why the abbreviation for proton can also be H+, because that comes from the symbol for hydrogen, the simplest atom. If it's the simplest atom, hydrogen, loses its electron, it would be left with a positive charge. And that this means the same thing as a proton because of its atomic structure. So that's where H+. Plus. And hey, great quiz question. Uh, tell me a symbol for a proton. There's two possible answers there.